Today, we're gonna talk about why homeschooling can be such a shock to your system. Ready? So here's a representation of an eight hour school day inside of a public school classroom or a private school. So you've got eight hours in your day where you focus on the academics, right? You've got math, you've got your language arts, which include spelling and vocabulary and literature and writing. You also have history and science. And then squished into this public school, a timing, you also have testing and test prep that the schools really focus on so that they can get their scores up, which helps with their funding and that kind of stuff. You have behavior management because classroom filled with a whole bunch of kids that are confused or needing direction or just need to move from one class to the next. That requires classroom management. Then you have the whole idea of political agendas that are being pushed down the pipeline from the bureaucrats, right? Whether or not you agree or disagree, this is of what they're teaching. This is kind of how the public school is set up. And then this other little section in your eight hour day is this is where you fit in things like eating, pausing just to have some fun, going outside, having recess. So in your public school day, look at how much of the day, and obviously this is not to scale, but look at how much of the classroom time is spent doing things other than core academic teaching. It actually represents more than half <laughs> of what's going on in the public school classroom. And if you've ever taught in a classroom, when you have more than a few kids that you're trying to teach a concept, you have at least one kid that totally gets it. And then two others that are, you're, you can give them a, a lesson and then they take off and they run with it. But the rest of the classroom time during math is actually spent helping those students that are confused or having behavioral problems. And you can actually take any of these subjects and you can divide them and you can say, okay, part of this classroom time is actually spent managing the kids that are confused or having behavioral issues. And so you're left with only these tiny pieces of actual teaching time within a classroom. And if you've ever taught in a public school or if you've ever taught in a classroom, you'll know that this is actually true. <laughs> so eight hours in a public school classroom, only a tiny portion of those eight hours is actually dedicated to academics. So now let, let's look at homeschool and let's talk about why it can be such a shock to our system. Yes, I'm biased as a 25 plus year homeschooler. I did draw the eight hour homeschool day with a heart <laughs> because we love the freedom that homeschool offers us, but this is why it can be a shock, especially if you're brand new to homeschooling. The academic piece of homeschooling, when you're, you take your academics and you bring them home, they only take a small portion of the eight hours of the active part of the school day. If your kids are little, they don't even take a fraction of that. You can spend less than an hour teaching kindergarten or first grade. And then as you get older, even a high schooler only takes three to six hours of academic time in homeschooling. So in a typical homeschool day, you'll spend anywhere average four hours or less with the actual academic part of your homeschool day. The rest of the day is filled with other things, just like in the classroom where you would be, instead of doing political agendas or behavior management, you might be doing things that your kids would call work. Oh, as parents, we mask that in words like chores or responsibilities around the house. So part of our day at home is dedicated to this thing called work. And this other part of the day right here would be dedicated to our kids' favorite activity, which is eating. So academics, work, managing the house, making the bed, brushing the teeth, feeding the dogs, eating, that takes about half of our homeschool day. This right here is why homeschooling is such a shock to so many people, because you're left with half or more of your day left wide open to pursue other things. 
So what does that mean? Well, in some cases, it's such a shock that people try to take the academic piece and bleed it into this other half of homeschool. I'm gonna recommend that you don't do that. Just because you're able to get all of the academic pieces done in a short period of time does not mean that you're neglecting academics. It means that you can actually see that you have time to do other things. So in homeschool, if you're not prepared for that, you might accidentally fill this time up with more chores, more academics, or because you're not quite sure what to do with it, the kids run free for the entire rest of the day doing things like video games or spending all day on the computer. And there's nothing wrong with screen time according to whatever you have set as a boundary and guides within your house. But this beautiful side of homeschool can be filled with all sorts of things. You can fill it with art. You can fill it with dance. You can fill it with music. You can fill it with rest. Do not neglect rest. You can fill it with boredom or at least a piece of boredom. Bored kids create things. They invent games. They do crafts. They lean into learning things like music. So in this open part of your school day, you can do art, dance, music, rest. You can let your kids be bored. You can pursue hobbies. You can pursue sports or anything that's important to your family. And that's why homeschooling can be such a shock because it really doesn't take that long to homeschool your kids to do the academic stuff. The beautiful thing about homeschooling is that these red pieces that are filled with behavior management and test prep and political agendas and all that kind of stuff that everybody has such big opinions about, we can take that big chunk of time and we can turn it into creative creativity or opportunities to lean into passions and talents. The reality of being a homeschooler is that behavior management is something that we don't call it that. We call it character training, and it's laced and interspersed throughout everything that we do as homeschoolers. So as we're working on academics, we are also working on character training. It doesn't mean that some days are going to be smooth sailing and that we don't have to do things like push academics aside to focus on behavior or character. But it does mean that as a homeschooler, we have a much bigger chunk of time that we get to invest into those things that make our kids' hearts beat faster or that make us excited about learning and growing. But don't be surprised, especially if you're a brand new homeschooler, the shock of setting that, sitting down to do your schoolwork with your kids and then being done super fast kind of sucks our breath away, especially in a culture that is not used to having children surrounding or being right next to their parents. And so you end up with this, um, this time where you are searching, well, what do I have my kids do? What, what am I supposed to do with this extra four, five, six hours in a day? Let the kids be bored. It's okay. Turn off technology at least for a little bit in a day. You decide what's important for your family, but give them a block of time where they're independent and they're not hardwired into something. It's super important. They need white space in their own brains to think. Explore. Go outside. Send the kids outside to play safely. Go to the library, check out books, lean into what the kids are, look, what they're excited about. Find places to explore together, to go on hikes or to go to visit museums and different shops and different areas around the town or far away. Explore. Find things for your kids to participate in and allow them to exercise physically and socially, um, either with um, classes or clinics of things that they're able to learn new skills, being around other people. Um, and then don't neglect this beautiful thing called rest. You, know, An hour in the afternoon was something that we did every day 
first, when the kids were little, they would obviously take naps. But as the kids got older, we still required quiet time. And there would be a pocket of time for an hour to an hour and a half every afternoon where everybody in the house would get a book and they would curl up and they would read for an hour to an hour and a half. And I would always tell the little kids, sometimes your body is going to decide that it's tired and it will fall asleep. But I am going to make you a promise that when rest time is over, I will wake you up because I don't want you to think that you're going to miss anything fun. So if your body decides that it needs to sleep, let it sleep and I will wake you up so that you don't miss anything. That really helped some of my kids because they would stop themselves from resting because they were afraid they were going to miss out on all the action. So why can homeschooling be so overwhelming? It's because it totally expands the time in the day. The kids aren't sitting in a classroom treading water waiting for these other issues to be resolved with their classmates. Instead, we have concentrated time where we're learning and exploring together academically. We're working together and training the kids how they move through life, being an active part of the team. We're eating together, teaching kitchen skills and how to actually cook and clean and just to enjoy time together. And then we have the rest of our day, the rest of our life to explore, to learn, and to share. Homeschooling can be shocking, but it is amazing. Here at A Better Way to Homeschool, we love to talk with homeschoolers, to hear what you're doing, where your challenge spots are, and then to breathe encouragement into your life. If that's something that you would be interested in, there is a link below so that you can see what that means, and we would love to chat with you soon.